Hello everybody, and especially to the, like, five people who are actually going to watch this video from start to finish. Um, this speed paint is very special for me, um, not only because I spent a lot of time making the artwork and I really wanted to share it with everyone, but also because it's it has a character that I've been really focused on for quite a while. Um, just a heads up, this audio is going to be very rambly because it's like the second video ever <laughs> um, I've made with voiceover, but also because um, I don't have a script on me because um, I think it would be a lot cooler if I just, you know, talked about my character and stuff about the character while it's going on. So I just wanted to start off by pointing out that the reason why I'm using two references in this um, speed paint is because the character design that you see is actually based off an older character design I made that was going to be for a specific um, DeviantArt group that I was trying to join, but because of reasons, um, I got kicked from that group. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> now I'm just making um, making it like my own personal character, and I'm not sure if anyone would notice that easily, but this is a Madoka Magico, Puelo Madoka Magi, Magico, there. PMMM, you know, short from like the Madoka Magica anime. This is a fan character for that anime. Um, it's an OC, but you know, fan character. Um, so basically, in this sort of alternate universe AU of Madoka Magica, um, Everyone's a furry, obviously. Um, this character's name is Arniella. They're a, a giant African land snail um, and cobra hybrid. Well, they're not actually a cobra hybrid, but they inherited um, like the pattern of a cobra from their dad, who had the cobra pattern from his father, which is just like really fun. Um, but they're actually an eel and a giant African land snail. And what I really like about the character is just that they're like an edgy little little asshole, <laughs> basically. So what this drawing specifically is of is what their wish actually is. And what they wished is to be able to travel the world. That was their wish. And there's a few reasons why they made this specific wish. And some of those reasons I can't really, I don't think I'll have enough time to really get into really detail. But the main thing is that they never really felt comfortable in the home that they were a part of. And even though the family they were with was really nice, they didn't feel like they belonged. And, you know, they didn't even, they weren't even biologic biologically related to their family, so that made them feel more different, so they simply decided, well, I don't think I belong anywhere, so I'm just going to run away, and that's exactly what they did when QB uh, approached them, and so this specific image is just them on their train, which can go anywhere in the world, and they're sitting by themselves in what I dub the Void. And the void is basically this infinite space where just there's nothing really. It looks like space, but there's really nothing. And it's basically where they go when they don't want to talk to anyone, when they don't want anyone to see them, and they just want to be completely alone. And it's a feeling that I get a lot, so I thought it would be very interesting to make a drawing of that kind of solitude, that self-isolation, since it's a really big part of their character. And, you know, you, there's just a, a lot of stuff to that. Um, I said that this is going to be rambly, it is. 
But I also heard that stuff like stuttering and pausing to go um, um, actually helps with people retaining the information from something. Which is kind of funny. Um, you know, don't overdo it, because if you do, then people are just going to focus on the fact that he keeps saying, um, uh, <laughs> instead of the actual focus of it. So... My favorite part was coloring because um, I just really like the like pattern and stuff I of the cobra, and I also like how he sort of mixed in, you know, regular snail patterns because usually snail patterns they have like a light underbelly to dark top. Um, snakes also usually have that, so I think the coloration really came naturally, especially since cobras and the giant African land snail, they both have, like, warm brown tones, so really it was just a fusion that really worked really well. So, Ariella, their outfit is a combination of inspirations. For one, you have, like, the train conductor motif, so that's where you get like the shiny gold buttons and stuff, and you have their cap. It's like, you know, um, the red on their outfit is supposed to like kind of represent their like anger and like their brash attitude because they're a very impulsive character. They don't really think before they act. They kind of just speed ahead. Um, the green, um, I wasn't sure why I chose the green, actually. I just kind of chose it because it was a color that worked well with everything else. And so that just kind of worked out nice. So, yeah. If you heard the door opening and closing, that was my sister who just gave me a bunch of gummy bears. Um, so they actually have two sisters who are worried sick about them. They don't know where they are. They, they just... Um, know that they're gone um, and so it's kind of like a plot point that their sister goes out looking for them in fact she makes her wish trying to find out where Arnie is and bring them back home but Arnie doesn't want to be found and that's kind of like the main driving conflict at the start of their beginnings as a magical I don't know if you noticed but they're non-binary. Um, I just want to note that because we're not really going to make like a, a girls only thing with this AU. Um, there's not much that changes in the AU from the canon of Madoka Magica other than, you know, obviously Madoka hasn't become Gotoka yet. Because then there wouldn't be witches and stuff. But yeah, they're a very solitary person. They don't want to be around anyone. They're just... They're not just, like, shy. They're not shy. That's something that I really want to make clear. They're not shy at all, they just feel like a loner and outsider, and they're kind of an asshole. Like, they're not a nice person by any means, uh, and I kind of want that to make like a major thing in their story, is that they're not like, oh, poor Arnie, <laughs> you know? Arniella is a sort of bad person, but that doesn't necessarily make them, like, evil. Like, they just make a lot of bad decisions. And why they do their bad decisions isn't really that important, but they do have the reasons on why they act in such a disorderly and counterintuitive way that doesn't help them. And, you know, there's a lot of people like that. I think that's most people, actually. Sometimes people are rude and mean for no reason, even though it would benefit them more to be nice. And I think part of that is just like you kind of learn to be a bad person from the way that you're raised. And I kind of want that to be the main focus of this character's story. 
you might have noticed that I kind of already made like an animatic featuring them, the Hell's Coming With Me animatic. That one, I wouldn't really consider it canon, but it does have some backstory in it. I mostly did that for fun and stuff. So yeah, I hope you like this little rambly stuff. I might make a more structured video talking about them more in depth, so that's all.